Hi everyone, welcome back again to our channel Land Matters. Like I always say, it matters that it is land. It really does matter because there are a lot of matters on land that we need to begin to analyze, to interrogate with a view to understanding them uh, and to see how we can live on this land, all of us peacefully, profitably, sustainably and for the future. My name is Abigail Bagaya Mukolu, a land and land governance expert practicing in Kenya. On today's episode, I want to talk about uh, encumbrances. Hmm? Last time, last week we talked about uh, cautions and restrictions. Today we want to talk about encumbrances. So what are encumbrances? If you look at your title, even your freehold title, even if you look at the official search form, there is normally a slot written on encumbrances. In other words, encumbrances can be found on a piece of land. So what are encumbrances? Encumbrances are impediments or burdens that have been registered on your title. They are just impediments or burdens that have been registered on your title. And I'm going to give the kind of encumbrances that we normally come across when we are dealing with issues land. And uh, what actually it means is that, what, I, what an encumbrance is that uh, it means that there's somebody else who has an interest in that land other than the registered owner? So, kuna mtu mwingine ambao hako na interest yake ndani ya hiyo shambo ispokuwa the registered owner. That's what the encumbrance is telling us. And I'm going to give the examples of encumbrances that normally are on land. And they also move with the land. So long as they are still registered on that title, they move with that land. Again, again, like I normally say, it's good to know because some of them you can deal with the land when they are there and others you cannot deal with in the land unless they are dealt with. So I want to give an example of some of the encumbrances we come across. The first one are liens, are normally called liens. These are normally things like mortgages or charges. For example, when you go to the bank, you get a loan. Uh, the bank gives you a loan and you put your title deed as security in the bank. Then a lien is registered against the title. That, that charge against that title of yours is a lien. So it means the bank has an interest in that property. Apart from yourself, the bank also has an interest. They will remove the charge. The land will become yours. But for a while, you've not paid the land and the charge is registered there. Somebody else has an interest in that land apart from yourself. Then, of course, there are also sometimes some forms of leases. There are people who have long-term leases. Nowadays, people are giving leases even over land. Some people are not selling their land outright. Somebody can give you a lease for 25 years, for 30 years, and they register it on the title. So it just says that apart from the registered owner, kuna tenant wa hiyo shamba ambao kuna interest katika hiyo shamba for a certain period of time paying a certain amount of, lay, of rent. So that is an encumbrance on the land. And when you do a search, they will reflect, they will come out. Other forms of encumbrances are uh, easements. Easements... Uh, are normally uh, there are form of uh, a right to do or not to do something on your piece of land on, on that piece of land and they normally include things like uh, public rights of way or way leaves now let me give an example of some of the encumbrances we normally come across which is easier for us to understand for example you may have the pipeline passing through your land you may have power lines passing through your land you may have a uh, sewer lines passing through your land these easements may sometimes be registered against your title and they will also be able to dictate how you use that piece of land. So it is good to know what kind of easements they are because it means that by the time these easements are registered on that land, the agents of the owner of the, of the easement can enter that land any time to carry out repairs or to do anything as pertains to that particular easement. What were Kenya power? If there's a way leaf passing through your land, they will come any time to fix the electricity. If there's a pipeline, they, the pipeline people will come for the petrol. They'll come and deal with it the way they want. Water, they will do the same. Sewer, if the sewer has a, pro a problem and it is passing through the land, and they, in other words, there's a way leaf for the sewer, they can come in any time they want to repair or to do with it whatever they want. So they have a right over that particular piece of land to do with it whatever they want for their purposes. And some of these way leaves are registered on their title. And sometimes some of these way leaves, when they are registered against their title, even if they are not registered, but you know they exist, they will also determine how you use that land. 
They may prevent you. Like I said, remember I explained what land is. Land is the surface that we step on, the one above and beneath. That is all your land. But now when you have a way leave, when you have these easements or way leaves or public rights of way over your land, they will determine how you use the land. You may be prevented from digging over that piece of land. For example, if you're going, if there's a pipeline there or water, they may tell you you cannot dig below this because you're going to interfere with the infrastructure. If it is power lines, you may be told you cannot build up to a certain height. You may only be told this land of yours is only good now for grazing this portion. You can only use it for grazing. Because this the, the, the infrastructure, the installations under that way live, under the public right of way, can be accessed anytime by the agency concerned for public good. And if they are registered on your land, so you must ujipange roho, ujue, and there's an easement uh, registered on it, ukubali, that they can come in anytime, work on it, whenever they want. So lazima ujue hivo. And also, it will determine to what use you put the land or how you can use that land. Another kind of encumbrance that we see are restrictive covenants. So what are restrictive covenants? Restrictive covenants will be found in your lease or in your agreement for a certain particular property that you bought that determine how you will use that piece of land or to what use you'll put the land or how you can use that piece of land. I want to give an example because I think it's best explained by an example. For example, if you buy land in a gated community, so you go, you get a lease for the gated community it's saying that each plot shall have a single dwelling unit, maximum height, double story. Then after some two or three years, a big road passes near you and you're on the road. Then you decide that, hey, now my kaplot haka kamekua commercial. Watch and make maduka chini, mumba ju, seven floors. Then all of a sudden, all your neighbors are fighting you. They're taking you to court for spoiling the neighborhood. Then they read for you the small print. They tell you, have you read your lease? Your lease says these properties can never be. They are, can only be used for single family dwelling unit of a maximum two height, two, two floors. So you start complaining. But you see, in the small print, it said what the land can be put, what the land can be used for. So restrictive covenants are there. In fact, in some cases, some of the restrictive covenants even determine the color of the wall on the outside. What you cannot do, what you can do. So it is important to read the small print in the leases. For example, another restrictive covenant, for example, you buy land near the airport. Uh, our airports are actually normally managed by the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. They also have a restriction on how far high you can build near the airport. So if you are buying land the airport, the airport and you think that you can go 10 flo 15, 20 floors, <laughs> you better check and see. So buying land near certain installations will also determine how high you can go. For example, if you buy land near security installations, you may be prevented from building certain kinds of uh, property or putting the land to certain types of use because of the nature of your neighbors there. So there could be some restrictive covenants that determine how land in a particular area can be used, how land in a particular area can be determined. So it is important that you also check out and find out if there are any restrictive covenants on your title. So please, or on your lease, please read the fine print. Eh? Let nobody read for you. Jisome uwelewe. Kama ujui, ama uwelewi, uliza wakili wako, ama mutu mwingine akusome, aweze kuelezea. Because restrictive covenants do exist. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you once again for listening to me. If this is your first time to watch us, please click uh, the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel. So the next time when we post another video, you'll be able to keep abreast with some of the land issues that we are discussing. Thank you so much and God bless you. Bye.